Space Cat Chums, it's Jules normally doing videos on illustrating and publishing, but today I'm doing something a bit doggity. This is the story of this little fellow. This is Wally. He's almost 15, but we still get asked if he's a puppy. The reason I'm making this video today is because recently we had a little bit of a scare. I feel like maybe he's getting towards the end of his life and I wanted to make this before it's too late. And that thought has spurred me on to make a pretty... Imp that thought has spurred me on to make an important decision. So hang around and I'll tell you all about that in a little while. Back in 2008, we were looking at getting a Chihuahua. And actually we started off by looking at maybe getting a rescue dog and we went to look at a really sweet little fella called Paddy. But it wasn't quite right because he wasn't used to living with children and, and at the time my kids were then nine and five. So it didn't really work out with Paddy. But whilst we were there, this little ball of fluff like a little snowball, came tearing out of his pen where he'd been with his mum and his brothers and sisters and he just kind of came into our lives. And he was tiny, he was only about 12 weeks old at the time, so he literally looked like a tiny little snowball or maybe a snowball crossed with a polar bear. He was supposed to be my birthday present that year. And as I say, my kids were quite young at the time and now, 15 years later, he's seen them grow into adult men. We definitely had our difficulties. When he was pretty small and we'd only had him maybe six weeks or so, my husband decided he was going to buy him one of those marrow bones that you can get from the butchers to keep him occupied and help with his teeth and, you know, he loved it. He absolutely loved it. But when my son came home, my youngest son came home from school, I think Wally thought he was going to take his marrow bone and he leapt up at him and bit him in the ribs and, oh my goodness me, chaos ensued. And my son still has the scars to this day. At that point, we really wondered whether we were going to be able to keep this crazy dog. But... We did. We took him to puppy classes and we also got him some special one-to-one -one counselling to try and decide what to do and that was really helpful. But he still had his really odd ways about him. He doesn't like people in high-vis coats, he doesn't like the posty, he didn't really like people walking past our house and he was quite highly strung as you'll probably see. <coughs> At one point it definitely crossed our minds that could we really keep this dog? But with the training and also because we didn't want to just give up on him and think about him being somewhere else, goodness knows where, with who doing what, we decided to keep going. So he's been with us for the last 15 years and we've given him a really loving home even though he's still a bit crazy. We later discovered that his parents were siblings and that probably didn't help much. When he was two and a half, we got Maisie, the other dog that you've probably seen in a few more of my videos. We thought it might help him to have a companion. And actually, it has really helped. Although, I've got to tell you, Maisie wears the trousers. She's definitely the one in charge and she won't stand any nonsense from him. And if he goes anywhere near one of her biscuits, wow, does he know about it. Wally loves food. And when he was younger, he used to get the mad zoomies at around about four o'clock in the afternoon and tear off round the house several times. If only I'd attached a duster to him, maybe he could have done some housework for me. Hmm, didn't think of that at the time. By way of proving that chihuahuas aren't completely stupid, we trained our dog to come and get his dinner in the manner of a chicken. Bag. 
Oh, and he loves, loves, loves Christmas because he gets to open Christmas presents. Most of them are not his own. He always really liked to be close with us. And for the first few years, we battled on trying to make him sleep downstairs, but he really, really didn't like it. So eventually we decided he'd come and sleep upstairs with us. And honestly, it was the best decision we made because he got to sleep and we got to sleep. It was a bit like having a newborn baby and figuring that one out. Wally has always been much more of a boy's dog. He really loves my husband and he loves our boys. And he tolerates me because I'm the one who takes him for a walk and also feeds him. But he's definitely got a very, very strong attachment to my husband, which is really helpful because he has been really unwell for the last six or seven years and Wally will just sit with him for endless hours and they just watch TV together and, and kind of potter about together and do stuff. He's also been really brilliant with one of my kids who has autism and uh, he, if he's finding it difficult to like face things in general, Wally will go and sit with him and definitely make him feel a lot better. But now, as you might be able to see, Wally has cataracts and he's pretty deaf. We reckon he's probably got about 80% sight loss and about 80% deafness as well, unless he hears the word biscuit. Hmm, didn't hear it then. He also clearly has pretty achy bones and joints these days and taking him for a walk is a pretty long and slow process. But we have a lovely vet who takes really good care of him and even puts up with the deafening racket that he performs on approaching the vet's door, going in the room and having any treatment. Last weekend, there was something up with him and I was quite worried. He was, I think, clearly in some sort of pain. He kept going for a wee all the time and apparently was getting up hourly in the night. He had... I thought a bit of blood in his wee and he kept turning around and looking at his bottom end. So I knew there was something not quite right and I was really hoping it was just something fairly simple. So Saturday morning, emergency vets had to take him along and the vet Peter saw him and agreed that he thought it was probably a urine infection. So gave him two injections and sent him on his way and fingers crossed that it wasn't anything worse than that so that's kind of where we are at the moment he has definitely improved and he's feeling a lot better although the vet said he's probably very was very very uncomfortable it's very painful in his bladder and his um gentleman's area hopefully he's okay and it's not kidney stones or any kind of cancerous thing although at 15 you know i guess you start to expect that kind of thing to happen so although you might have heard me talk a lot more about Maisie on this channel because we're two girls together I just want to say Wally I love you we love you you're part of our family and you'll stay in our hearts forever and as you get more old and more doddery We'll look after you, we'll keep you comfortable and we'll see you right through to the end and the start of your rainbow bridge when it comes. Back before I started this channel, I was doing work on Etsy, selling illustrations and mainly pet portraits. I used to love doing that so much, it meant such a lot to people and I really get it. I really understand why it's important not just to have a photo but to have a character representation of your furry loved one. The way I worked was to get people to send me not just a few photos of their pet but also any special toys or food items that they particularly liked and a short description of their character like are they cheeky or funny or like to sleep a lot and that way I could really bring the character to life. And believe me, it wasn't just dogs or cats. I've drawn goats, Shetland ponies, parrots, guinea pigs, you name it, I've probably immortalised it on paper. I've decided to open the doors to doing this again, so it's up on my website now. 
if you want to go and have a look you can choose how many pets you want in one image or you can have separate ones if you prefer. All you need to do after you purchase it from the website is to send me some photos and then I will communicate with you showing you a rough drawing before I start on any final pieces and you can make changes at that point. When it's all done I'll post it to you and you'll get a mounted but unframed signed print. I used to send out framed prints but the delivery services don't always take as much care as I'd like so it's much better for you to buy your own frame. The mount is a standard size and that way you can choose your own frame style too. This makes a great gift for anyone who has a pet friend or for yourself. And with Christmas looming on the horizon, I expect this will be a very popular request for me. So don't dilly dally. Well, I hope this doesn't come across as some kind of sleazy old sale because it definitely wasn't meant like that. I've just realized in Wally's old age how much I really enjoyed drawing people's furry friends and why not start again? If it's something you might be interested in, I'll leave the link in the description below. I think it's almost biscuit time, so we might go and hunt one down. Hey, Wally? Next week, I will be showing you how to draw horses and unicorns. Go on, you know you want to. I'm off to gnaw on a narwhal. I will see you next week. Nano, nano.